Peace be with you. Uh, let's try that again. Peace be with you. This familiar exchange, which we use at every Mass, that's the focus of today's Gospel. The gift of peace and of God's Spirit. So let's put a little attention to those. My mother was an avid mystery reader. And I apologize if I have used this story before, but I'm going to use it again. She was an avid mystery reader. Whenever she would pick up a new mystery, she would begin with the last chapter of the mystery. She wanted to know the outcome. And then she would begin from the beginning. And she could then enjoy the mystery. She could enjoy, you know, reading about how the author unfolds the story for her. And she didn't, she could focus on which characters were really the important ones. Which ones really didn't mean anything to the story at the outcome. She just really sat back and enjoyed the story. You know, she didn't have to solve the mystery. It was already done for her. Christ's gift of peace is the final outcome of our life's story. Through his passion and his resurrection, he has already won for us the gift of salvation. Our hope for eternal life is fulfilled in Christ's gift of peace. Can we accept that? Do we wake up every moment, every morning, knowing that our salvation is assured? Do we live our life knowing that God has saved us and that we can live in that peace of Christ? You know, when Christ tells his apostles that peace be with you, right? They're locked away in an upper room. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Christ appears to them. A man who was crucified. A man who was dead. But yet has risen from the dead. And the first words that he speaks to them are, Peace be with you. That's somewhat unexpected. I mean, think about a time in your life when you've had some kind of really traumatic experience. Maybe someone dies or you've got a serious illness or something is going on. And a friend shows up and the first words out of their mouth are, Peace be with you. You're probably not going to be ready to accept those words right then and there. They're hard to accept. It's not really what you wanted to hear right at that moment. But the gift of peace takes time to understand. We need to reflect upon it, and then it makes itself known to us. Christ also bestows on his apostles the Holy Spirit. 
And he commands them to go out and to preach the gospel to the entire world. And not only does he give this command, but he empowers the apostles with the divine power to forgive sins, something only God can do. And yet, this mission that he sends them on, it's going to be fraught with danger. There's going to be suffering and pain. The same suffering and pain that Christ himself endured and yet overcame. Now the apostles, they didn't immediately go out and begin fulfilling that command of Jesus. They remained locked away in that room until that same spirit inspired them to go out. That's the feast we celebrate today, that feast of Pentecost, when the Spirit finally manifested them, himself in them and inspired them to go out because they understood the gift of Christ's peace. They no longer feared what would happen to them because they knew the outcome of the story. We, too, have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, both at our baptism and more fully at our confirmation. How is it that we're living that life of the Spirit? How is it that that spirit, that same spirit that transformed the lives of the apostles, how is it transforming our life? Now, we are all called to proclaim that gospel, but we are called in different ways. Paul tells the Corinthians that the manifestation of the spirit is different in each one of us. Yet it is the same and one Spirit that calls us all. We are parents and grandparents. We are called primarily to proclaim that gospel to our family and to those whom we come in contact with each and every day. We are also young people. And our calling right now as a young person is to learn how to live that calling out by understanding the teachings of Jesus Christ. But even during that time of our youth, we too can proclaim that gospel to our family and to our friends. If we live that gospel out, if we live that spirit out in our lives, the gifts of the spirit, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord, they will manifest themselves in us. And with those gifts become the fruit from those gifts. Paul tells us, tells the Galatians, that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, generosity, self-control. If we live that life in the Spirit, we get all of those gifts 
And our life bears the fruit of that. Wow. Wouldn't that be a wonderful life to live? It would bring meaning and purpose to our life. Today, let us all try to live in that spirit of God and see if we don't experience the joy and the peace and the unity with God in our life.